Hello everyone, this is Sarah's Trivia, and today we're continuing the first rebellion of Why Not? Let's Talk War series with episode 3, titled Wang Ling's Plot. Before we get started, here's the answer to our trivia question from the end of our last episode, and be sure to stay tuned until the end of this episode for a brand new trivia question. Now, last time, we ended as we discussed Wang Ling's rationale behind his opposition of Sima Yi, as it mainly stemmed from Sima Yi's treatment of Cao Shuang and Cao Shuang's cohort after Cao Shuang had surrendered to Sima Yi on the basis that he would be show leniency. But not long after, Sima Yi went back on his words and executed Cao Shuang and all his associates, despite taking an oath with plenty of high-level Wei officials as witnesses to the Lloyd River that Cao Shuang would not be harmed. Now, while Wang Ling was not exactly a Cao Shuang loyalist or supporter, he still felt indebted to Cao Shuang for the many promotions he had received under Cao Shuang's reign. So in early 249, right after Cao Shuang's execution, Wang Ling started his plot against Sima Yi. Initially, the first person Wang Ling contacted about his plans was his nephew, Ling Hu Yu, who was the prefect of the Yan province located directly north of Wang Ling. Now, Wang Ling picked Ling Hu Yu not only because he was his nephew, but also because he was Cao Shuang's zhang shi, or chief advisor, before being promoted to become the prefect of the Yan province. So Lin Hu Yu was clearly a Cao Shuang loyalist and someone who didn't mind extracting revenge against Sima Yi on Cao Shuang's behalf. So after receiving words from his uncle, Lin Hu Yu used the excuse of preparing for a potential Wu attack to move the Yan province garrison south to an area called Ping A, which is located directly north of Shouchun, right next to Wang Ling's garrison, as the two of them basically combined their troops together in preparation for their planned rebellion. Now, aside from amassing troops, what Wang Ling and Ling Hu Yu really needed was a rallying cry to legitimize the rebellion, as after all, Cao Shuang was a rather unpopular regent. So even with Sima Yi's shameless about-face on the execution of Cao Shuang, no one was going to put their life on the line and commit treason just to avenge Cao Shuang. Furthermore, there was no sign that Sima Yi wanted to usurp himself, especially with him turning down the position of prime minister, as well as the night bestowment, and the fact that Sima Yi was already 71 years old. So, in order to garner wider support for their cause and rebellion, Wang Ling came up with a plan to rally behind a new emperor instead of the current emperor Cao Feng, who had just turned 18, as Wang Ling made the argument that Cao Feng was too dim-witted and weak-willed to guide Wei at a time when the Wei court was dominated by powerful elder statesmen such as Sima Yi, his brother Sima Fu, and his up-and-coming eldest son in Sima Shi. Add on the fact that Cao Feng was not the late Emperor Cao Rei's biological son, as none of Cao Rei's biological sons survived him, there was a case to be made for another one of the Cao princes, especially a capable one, to take over. And of the Cao princes, Wang Ling ended up picking Prince Cao Biao of the Bai Ma princedom to become their figurehead. Now, Cao Biao was the son of Cao Cao, which makes him the current Emperor Cao Feng's grand uncle. Born in the year 195, Cao Biao was born by concubine Lady Sun, three years younger than the famed poet Cao Zhi, and one years older than the famed child prodigy Cao Chong. Cao Biao had a rather unassuming upbringing as one of Cao Cao's many sons. By 249, Cao Biao was already 57 years old and currently the Prince of Bai Ma, a small county located in the Dong Commandery of the Yan province, aptly named for the Bai Ma Crossing in its jurisdiction. Never much a notable figure, Cao Biao was most likely selected by Wang Ling mainly because of his availability, as Bai Ma fell under the jurisdiction of Lin Hu Yu in the Yan province. So in 249, Lin Hu Yu sent his official Zhang Shi to visit Prince Cao Biao in Bai Ma princedom under the guise of a routine princedom inspection to touch base with Cao Biao and make their intentions known as according to Wang Ling's plan, once the rebellion starts, they're going to rally behind Cao Biao as a new emperor and set up a competing imperial court in the secondary capital of Xuchang 
in opposition of Sima Yi's court in Luoyang with Emperor Cao Fang. And by all records, it seems that Cao Biao agreed to Wang Ling and Ling Hu Yu's plot, and thus the first rebellion of Huainan got their symbolic leader. Now, the reason why Wang Ling was so confident that he could set up a rivaling imperial court in Xuchang mainly stems from his unique network of connections with the entire Wei border provinces. Starting with himself, Wang Ling controlled all military and civil affairs in the Yang province, which had a garrison force of over 50,000 troops. On top of that, Wang Ling also controlled the civil matters in the nearby Yu province. To the north, Wang Ling's nephew and co-conspirator in Ling Hu Yu controlled all military and civil matters in the prefect of the Yan province, which had at least 30,000 garrison troops. To their west, in the Jin and Yu provinces, the military matters of the Wei Southern Front fell under the control of General Wang Chang, who was a hometown friend of Wang Ling, as Wang Chang also held from the Taiyuan commandery, even though Wang Chang did not belong to the esteemed Wang Gentry clan of Taiyuan that Wang Ling belonged to. But given their similar age with Wang Ling a few years Wang Chang senior, and the close relationship during their younger days, Wang Chang referred to Wang Ling as his older brother. So even without informing Wang Chang of his rebellion beforehand, Wang Ling felt confident that Wang Chang would either support him, or at least remain neutral and not stab him in the back if he should rebel. In terms of civil matters, there was no one in charge of the Jin province at the time, as the previous prefect, Li Sheng, never made it to his post before being executed as part of Cao Zhuang's cohort. But as we mentioned before in episode 1 of this series, pretty soon Sima Yi would promote Wang Ji to become the new prefect of the Yang province in charge of the civil matters here. And if you remember from our brief mention of Wang Ji's backstory, where he was a hot commodity in his youth, one of his former bosses that competed fiercely for his service was Wang Ling himself, back when Wang Ling was the prefect of the Qing province, where Wang Ji was from. Additionally, Guo Huai, the man in control of the Wei Western forces in the Yong and Liang provinces, was also Wang Ling's brother-in-law. So in essence, Wang Ling had intimate connections with every single official in leadership positions in the Wei provinces of Yong, Liang, Jin, Yu, Yang, and Yan, making up the entire Wei border provinces that also contained the vast majority of the Wei troops that were stationed in these areas to defend Wei's borders. And given this setup, the only thing that Wang Ling remotely worried about was the safety of his eldest son, Wang Guang, who was at the time serving as an imperial secretary in the Wei imperial court in Luoyang. Now Wang Ling, who was already 78 years old, had four adult sons. His oldest and most successful son, Wang Guang, was a renowned philosopher, scholar, and court secretary. His second and third sons in Wang Fei and Wang Xiao were much less famous and only held minor government posts, while Wang Ling's fourth and youngest son, Wang Mingshan, was quite famous as a renowned calligrapher. Of his four sons, Wang Ling only consulted with his eldest in Wang Guang about the planned rebellion when he sent a messenger to inform his son of his plans. Hearing his father's intent to rebel, Wang Guang advised his father to reconsider as he pointed out that Cao Shuang and his cohort got what they deserve, and even though Sima Yi did break his oath and execute Cao Shuang, no one is mourning for Cao Shuang's death. And while Sima Yi and his clan do control the courts now, their intentions remain to be seen, and at least for now, they seem to follow all the protocols of the court and remain focused on the greater good of the kingdom, which means that they have the support of the court, add on the fact that Sima Yi and his sons now control the military, any attempts of overthrowing them would be difficult to say the least. Now, despite his son's astute analysis of the situation, Wang Ling had no intentions of halting his plot, as once a treasonous plot got underway, stopping at halfway is oftentimes more of a death sentence than going for it despite the difficulties. And to find out what happened to Wang Ling's plot and its result, come back next time as we'll wrap up Act 1 of the Fall of Wei series with the conclusion of the First Rebellion of Huainan, in episode 4, titled The Unraveling. 
So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below or just by hitting the like button. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!